approaching you. All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the beautiful Veterans Memorial Hall and Museum. Tonight is Thursday, December 8th, 2022. And I'd like to have the uh, invocation and pledge allegiance tonight by board member Angela Fellers. Spellers. Mr. Thompson, are there any agenda announcements this evening? Yes, one uh, change. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the two items, A, B, uh, under agenda item number 11, under new business, will be taken up after the uh, public comment section of the agenda. So that would uh, come right after uh, the public participation. Okay. Thank you, good. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Clerk Gumbau, can you please call the roll? Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We will start with Mr. Arena. Here. Mr. Booker. Present. Mr. Butita. Here. Mrs. Crosby. Here. Ms. Fellers. Mrs. Goral. Mr. Guevara. Present. Ms. Hansard. Here. Mr. Hoffman. Present. Mr. Lindmark. Present. Mr. McCarthy. Present. Mr. McDonald. Present. Mr. Neighbors. Present. Mr. Penny. Here. Mr. Salgado. Present. Mr. Scroll. Here. Mr. Sweeney. Here. Mr. Tassoni. Present. Mr. Thompson. Present. Mr. Webster. Here. Thank you all. Mr. Chairman, 20 board members present. Thank you. We do have a quorum. All right, under number five on our agenda, awards, presentations, public hearings, and public participation, we have one public speaker this evening. It's uh, Reverend Earl Dotson Sr. I'm gonna read the statement and then you can come forward. Comments shall be limited to three minutes. Speakers may not address zoning matters which are pending before the ZBA, zoning committee, or the county board. Personnel matters or pending or threatened litigation may not be addressed in open session. An individual may speak a maximum of three times per calendar year on the same topic. This prohibition shall include the repetition of the same topic in a statement on what is purported to be a different topic. Personal attacks or inappropriate language of any sort will not be tolerated. Reverend. Thank you, sir. The Bible. And behold, thy kinswoman Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. She was called barren. Two women, one supposedly barren, about to give birth, the other, a virgin teenager, about to give birth. They believed, for with God, Nothing is impossible. The power of faith. Jesus said, have faith in God. According to your faith, be it done to you. In spite of facing difficulty and discouragement and the weight of the world pulling us in opposite direction, faith is the answer. But faith undergirds authenticity, which means reliability, genuineness, realness, and worthy of trust. I and a group of ministers recently visited Springfield, I encountered what I call two authentic black women, the Senate Majority Leader, Kimberly Lightfoot, and Debbie Myers Martin. P. 
People will not accept the dynamism they represent, challenging, selfish power of people, some people here on the earth. Their explosive faith these women exhibit is like fire of disconnect with things that are, that are supported by certain vested interests. This disconnect they exhibited is intertwines and is rooted in misconceptions, racism, for example, ignoring black desires for economic development and its good consequences. Authentic women must make people restless before needless poverty, poor dwellings against the starved misery of the descendants of former sharecroppers and similar pathologies. Enter authentic black women like Kimberly Lightfoot, Debbie Myers, and Mary Flowers, especially the first two, who like Elizabeth and Mary, brought forth a new era for mankind. Not a Christ child or his precursor, but they brought forth a passion of pity for the poor, the oppressed like those who are determined to rebuild West Side Rockwood through faith, believing nothing is impossible with God. And those who do not have this will be replaced by a very different type of man and woman. Authentic black women will say, away with the fakes, the liars, the deceivers, the oppressors. Make way for a new and different man and woman like the West Side Rebuilders, by exalting those of lower state. Of course, I stress our request for $25 million in state funds. I love what Senator Lightfoot said. You guys, there's plenty of money down here. And guess what? I'm going to help you get some of it. That is what I call an authentic, an authentic black woman. That $25 million is a pittance in a state budget of $45 billion. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. This is the Advent season, and we get prepared for the event. Thank you. Okay, we will jump to number 11 on our agenda under new business. We have two items. One is a resolution adopting the organizational structure of the county board of the County of Winnebago, Illinois. And the second is an ordinance amending Chapter 2, Article 2, Division 3 and 4 of the Winnebago County Code relating to the rules of order and procedure of the County Board of the County of Winnebago, Illinois. Mr. Arena. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move uh, to suspend the rules on uh, the item, the ordinance amending Chapter 2, Article 2, Division 3 and 4 of Winnebago County City Code. Uh, county code. There's a motion to suspend the rules on 11B, the ordinance. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Booker. Are there any board members opposed to suspension of rules this evening on 11B? All right, hearing none. Oh, one. Ms. Goral? Um, You're opposed to the suspension of rules? Um, it's under 11B, the ordinance amending Chapter 2 for the suspension of rules. Is this no, that's part, no of that's, part that's part of A. That's part of A. That's part of the first A. That's under the resolution. Very good. So, again, there's any board members opposed to the suspension of rules? Okay, hearing none, please cast a yes for all members present. The rules are suspended. Mr. Arena? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I want to begin by thanking uh, everyone for their cooperation in establishing these uh, committee assignments. Uh, Mr. Mr. Arena, are you making a motion now that the rules? Oh, are motion to approve. I apologize. Okay. So, There's a motion to approve 11B so, has been suspended. Yes. And I a move second to, by Mr. Neighbors. Right. 11B only. Correct. And now discussion. Okay. So on 11B, I just want to point out the items that were changed so everyone's aware of what we did. Um, what's different here is the vice chairs are being established by the committee chairs. Prior to that, we would have established the vice chairs this evening. Um, there is clarifying language in section 2-67 uh, to specify that, um, so this is just a re reorganizing the wording that was here before. Um, 
our rule effectively stated before that there were no voice votes. Every, every vote would be recorded. Uh, this specifies more clearly that that's, that's what's happening. Um, so even though it's all roll call vote, the chairman may still ask for consent for all the members if they uh, approve of a vote and then record everyone's vote in the affirmative, um, provided there's no more than two members who object. So that's just clarifying. Section 2-69, this is something we discussed last time we um, had <clears throat> that we adopted rules about um, it, pro it, it said before that uh, the votes were determined by a majority of the members present, and that's how it ended. This adds the word present and voting, and it's there because if it's just the members present, it means that when someone abstains, their vote has the effect of being a no vote. And this suggestion was brought to us by Nancy Sylvester, who did the uh, parliamentary training for us last time. And um, I included it here because it seems to make sense to me, but it, we can discuss it. I, I don't know why we would want someone's abstention to um, have the effect of being a no vote. Um, and, and then finally, this just specifies that when you're abstaining, you state your intent to abstain prior to the, the, the vote being taken, rather than just when your name is called at that point say that you abstain. I believe that are all, those are all the changes in the uh, rules of procedure. Thank you. Um, Mr. Butita. Uh, thank you. So uh, my question is uh, uh, for section 2-91, um, does the, it indicates that uh, the county board in member, order, Mr. Chairman. This isn't in there. It's not on the floor yet. What was the section again, Mr. Butita? Okay, 291. This is the... 2-91? The, 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 yeah, we had this place on our That's table. This is not part of the ordinance of Chapter 2? Correct. 91 reserved. Yes, Chairman, that's not. Go ahead. Yeah, Chairman, if I may. 2-91 is not in your packet. It's a proposed amendment that... Um, Mr. Guevara will make, so it's not in the current packet. It's a oh, separate I, attachment that was provided on the, the table. All right, so it's you. not on the floor yet. Is that all you had, Mr. Butita? Uh, for right now, yes. Okay, Mr. Guevara. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if there's no comment on uh, the changes that um, were to the ordinance in the packet, um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, amend the ordinance to add section 2-91 um, and speak to it. So if there's a motion by Mr. Guevara for section 2-91 as an amendment, do I have a second? Mr. Butita? Seconds the motion, Mr. Guevara. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to briefly outline the process, um, I had been asked uh, a week or so ago about um, remote uh, committee meetings, um, what my thoughts were on it. Um, it would, in the event of emergency um, or um, a health issue, be a handy thing to have, but that I thought we needed it in the rules and I didn't know whether it existed. Um, I had brief conversations about it with other members and was encouraged to talk to you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you mentioned that you would talk to Attorney Vaughn to see what was uh, possible. Um, she and I had uh, a conversation yesterday um, about uh, th that it was possible, um, and then this document was drawn up as a result. Um, there were a handful of members um, of the ca Republican caucus who expressed um, an interest in um, having it come through caucus. Um, and if, that's, uh, if that remains the case, I'm open to uh, the motion to do that um, if they would choose to make it. Okay. Mr. Butita, you have a follow up on, yeah, on now this? Now I do have a question, yes. So, uh, just to clarify, a uh, board member may attend regular or special meetings. This would include committee meetings. Mm. Is that the end? Okay, very good. Mr. Sweeney. Thank you, Mr. Butita. Yeah, so I would certainly advocate for this to go through uh, the proper committee that it should when we're talking about, you know, basically fundamentally, fundamentally op changing how it is that we could operate. Um, you know, this 
there was plenty of time for this to be brought up on Monday at our meeting, um, and we didn't discuss it. <coughs> and um, I think that if Mr. McDonald was agreeable to, you know, putting an agenda item on his agenda to discuss this, that that's that's where it should go because there's other questions about um, this policy that I, that I know I would like to have a chance to discuss and. A last-minute flurry of phone calls. I don't think should be the way that this should be done. I, I personally would like to see it go through a proper committee and turn into something that I can support. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sweeney, Mr. Guevara. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you Chairman. guys could talk closer to the mics, oh, it's hard to hear. <laughs> thank you. I also have a tendency to dip my head. <laughs> that that makes it harder too. Um, I omitted uh, in, informing the board that. Um, our, our neighboring counties, Boone County, DeKalb County, DuPage County, Lake County, McHenry County, um, and Kane County uh, all, all have um, some provision um, in, in various language. Um, a number of changes were made um, even with the flurry of phone calls. It's a nine paragraph uh, uh, amendment. It's roughly 400 words. Um, it might take a minute and a half to read. Um, I certainly think that uh, this body is just loaded with intelligent and able people, um, but I am uh, respectful of the process and I'm happy to, if Mr. McDonald uh, puts it on the agenda, to send it to the Operations Committee. Thank you, Mr. Guevara. So, Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'd be very happy to have it on the agenda the, the very next meeting, uh, Mr. Thompson, if it goes that direction. Uh, I think overall this is a good thing, but we need to better define things and have a communication. Okay, thank you, Mr. McDonald. So we, yes, Ms. Crosby. It is my understanding that this language is directly out of the state statute. Is that true, or has anything been changed in here? Ms. Vaughn. Thank you, Chairman. Um, no, some of the language is from the Open Meetings Act, but some of the provisions are not. They were proposed by Mr. Guevara because under the Open Meetings Act, the county board can adopt its rules and procedures for remote meetings in addition to whatever current requirements are in the Open Meetings Act. So I can let you know which parts are in the Open Meetings Act. So for the committee purposes, can you um, redline it or something for the members so they can see what state statute and the changes that uh, Mr. Guevara would like to make? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Crosby. Okay, so we have a, a motion and a second to amend the rules and procedures with this amendment. Mr. Guevara. Um, my question now is to what the procedure is to uh, send this to committee, if, if that's the, the position of the board. Do we need a, a motion to... Well, you just withdraw the Do I need to withdraw my motion and have it sent to committee uh, by the chair, or how, do, how does that work? Either way, I believe we can. Respond. I recommend we're drawing your amendment, and then it will just be put on the committee agenda, pursuant to Mr. McDonald's concurrence for next week. Sweet. Um, consider that we'll withdrawn. Them. Okay. He needs to with Mr. Guevara withdraws, withdraws his amendment. He needs to withdraw his second. second okay. It was also withdrawn. Very good. And Mr. Just to clarify, Mr. McDonald, you'll be directing the staff to place it on the agenda of the amendment. Yes. For the next appropriate meeting. The next meeting. Correct. Okay. Very good. So that concludes that. Now we're back to the original motion. So the yes. So now we're back to the original motion uh, to adopt the rules and procedures. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, are there any board members opposed to the motion to approve the rules and procedures that are before you? Hearing none, please cast a yes for all members present. Thank you. Now we'll move back to, get this. that's 11B, 11A, do we have a motion? Mr. Arena. I move uh, <clears throat> to approve the resolution adopting organizational structure for the County Board of County of Winnebago. It's second by Mr. Guevara. So moved by Mr. Arena, second by Mr. Guevara. Is there any discussion? Yes, Ms. Goral. 
Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, I, when I went over this uh, today, I went over the county board standing committees, and the first thing I noticed that Mr. Salgato had been removed as chair, and Mr. Butita had been put into the chair position, and Mr. Salgato as vice chair. I, to me, Mr. Salgato did a great job of being the chair of finance. I would still like to see him back as the chair of finance. And so I move that I would like to have those two switched, if possible. Thank you. So there's a, a motion to amend the resolution, correct? As it pertains to the finance committee, finance committee only? Correct. Correct? Okay. Um, did everyone hear that motion of hers? Do you want to repeat that, Ms. Goral? Yes. On the Finance Committee, I would like to say, because Mr. Salgado has done such a great job on our Finance Committee, and I've never heard anyone complain about him being chair of the Finance Committee, I would like to Mr. Salgado to remain as chair and Mr. Butita as vice chair. Okay, so the motion is to remove Mr. Butita as chair and place Mr. Salgado as chair. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and was there also a vice chair that was already selected or not? No. no. So I don't think the vice chair is on the table. But I believe Mr. Butita was vice chair previously. No. No, he was not. He was not? No. Okay. I don't believe so. Is that correct, Mr. Butita? Okay. All right, so the motion is to amend the resolution, the organizational structure under finance to put Mr. Salgado as the chair, correct? And a second by Mr. Neighbors. Is there any discussion from board members? Mr. Arena. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I agree with what Ms. Goral has said, that Mr. Sutton <coughs> did an excellent job as chair of finance. Um, there was nothing uh, related to his performance in, in this change. This was simply another board member expressed an interest in holding this position. We had uh, extensive conversation uh, with Mr. Salgado. He was very gracious um, in you know, being open-minded to other opportunities, um, even though we're not designating who uh, vice chairs are at this time. There is a commitment from Mr. Butita that he would establish Mr. Salgado as vice chair of finance. And in addition, Mr. Salgado will assume the chairmanship of the newly formed legislative and lobbying committee. So uh, there was some concession made to him uh, for this change having been made. I just wanted everyone to be aware of that. So, and, and because we have spent a significant amount of time working on this and trying to accommodate everyone's desires in their various committee assignments, um, I will respectfully be voting no to uh, Ms. Skorl's uh, uh, proposed amendment. Thank you. Discussion? Board members? Mr. Hoffman. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I agree with Ms. I, I agree and I don't agree with the whole problem, but I've been dealing with this now for about two or three weeks. I've, I have had discussions with prominent Republicans uh, in high places, and they too have told me they think Jaime should stay in that position because he's done a very good job. But on the other hand, I've also had a lot of discussions with Mr. Arena, uh, with Mr. Salgado, and uh, I gather from Mr. Salgado, and I might be wrong, but I think I got it, that he has made peace with the situation as it is, and I support, then I have to support what Mr. Salgado wants. Can we clarify what Mr. Salgado wants? <laughs> Mr. Salgado. Yes, thank you very much. Um, just for the record as well, uh, as part of those discussions that I had with Mr. Arena, Mr. Butita, and Mr. Um, Hoffman, um, I expressed my uh, it's still interest to be chair. Um, however, uh, Mr. Butita approached saying that he was interested on that perspective. So um, we came to a, a mutual agreement 
uh, between uh, so we can continue to move our county forward in the right direction. So I did make that concession um, with Mr. Hoffman, um, and this is where Ms. Goral may not be uh, up to date uh, with this information. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, yes, I did make that a concession, but uh, just want to point that out uh, with that I still had that interest of being the finance chair. So just that I, wa I didn't want to be it. I just want that for the record, but I did make that concession for us to move forward in, in the amical, amical uh, position moving forward and get the county going. So um, as Mr. Rena alluded, uh, me taking on the leadership uh, chairmanship for the legislative, I did concede that and also to become, if Mr. Butita still can uh, uh, acts as vice chair, I would act as vice chair for finance. So yes, um, from that perspective. Okay. Is that Ms. Goral, did you still want me to move forward with the vote on your amendment to the Finance Committee? No. No, you're withdrawing your... Do I have another amendment. Okay. okay. Here we go. Thank Is you. the second also withdrawn, Mr. Neighbors? Okay, here we go. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Okay, so how does that work? <laughs> she withdrew the... Yeah, so we still... Don't... I'm sorry? I will withdraw my amendment. Yeah, so the, she, Ms. Goral is withdrawing her amendment, so <laughs> the second is withdrawn. Uh, All right, thank you, Mr. Neighbors. All right, Ms. Goral. Were you going to vote on that? Or no, you withdrew. My second amendment. Okay, second amendment. As I looked at the Finance Committee, I noticed that Ms. Crosby's name was taken off and no other woman was even put back in her position. I'm not happy with having a finance committee made up of all men. Sorry about that, guys. But that's how I feel about it. There should be a woman present on that finance committee. And I so move that they change that to be sure that either Mrs. Crosby gets back on that or another woman takes her place. So is that a motion to yes, to, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. to place a woman on the finance committee? Yes, that's thank the motion. You. Second by Ms. Fellers. Is there a discussion? Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Is, is there a requirement to specify the, the person going on the committee at this time? That would be preferred. Yes. <laughs> is it, uh, is yes. it preferred? What is it? Yes, so it is required. Of the so the motion would have to be amended to specify the individual. You would be replacing a member and putting another member on. Yes, that's the same. Thank you. <clears throat> so we'd have to have names. I have to have names. You'd have to remove. A, you would make an, a, a motion to amend the finance committee structure with removing one member and adding another member. Uh, Mr. Point Arena. Of, point of order. <clears throat> so this has a cascade effect, right? So. You have to identify the entire change of, of all the committees because this was developed by, you know, shifting people around. And if you, you know, take somebody off of this committee, they're going to go someplace else, and that's going to have to move someone from the other committee away. So there has to be, uh, yeah, it has to be comprehend a comprehensive solution. And and I just want to say that. We did spend time working on this to make it work out, but I, 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 you do have the right to make whatever changes you'd like to, to make. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Guevara, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm, I'm trying to clarify. Is it required by, by the rules of order and procedure to, if we add, to have say, only seven people on the committee? No. Um, do you need, if Ms. Gore wants to add a woman, does she need to add, she needs to specify the person, does she also need to remove somebody or can she just add an eighth person? I'm, I'm confused. Ms. Vaughn. Thank you, Chairman. So in the other part of the organizational structure, it has the composition for each of the committees. So if you wanted to have an even number, uh, well, if she wanted an even number of members, 
that can be proposed as well, but that would have to be changed under subsection 2B2 of the resolution as well. And that will be the only committee with eight members. Thank you. If that makes sense. Okay. They can take my spot. All right. Any further discussion? I would ask if there are any members of the Finance Committee who would be willing to step down and leave room for a woman to be appointed. Did everyone hear the, the question from Ms. Fellers? Okay, repeat the question, Ms. Fellers. My question is, are there any members who are currently assigned to the Finance Committee who would be willing to step down from Finance Committee in order for a woman to be named at a later date or this evening? Anybody? No. The answer, I guess, is no. So, yeah, I think so. Ms. Goral? And my suggestion is send it back to committee and let them straighten it out between themselves. You mean send it back to, was this, these were not originated from a no, committee, was correct? No, we decided to, to, to do this. I believe it would be Mr. Arena, Mr. Hoffman. Uh, are the two main ones, and whoever else was involved in making up the sheet of who should belong on what committees. Okay, so we have a motion and a second on the floor, Ms. Goral. <clears throat> Do you want me to proceed with the, ask the question? Okay. Discussion continues. Um, I'm, I'm gonna refer to my initial point of order. If the motion doesn't specify um, which woman is going on, or who is coming off, is the motion in fact in order? Thank you, Chairman. The, the motion actually never got completed because after she said a female, then the other question started. So yeah. it's just been discussion. As this and that's why I asked are you, who are you placing on and who are you removing? Fine. Then if they have removed Mrs. Crosby, then I suggest they put Mrs. Ms. Fellers on it and they can switch the two ladies on their committees. Oh, interesting. If you place Ms. Fellers on the Finance Committee, now you're out of, you have eight members. Where's Ms. Fellers? Is so, who would we remove from there? Uh, since no one has volunteered, may I suggest perhaps John Sweeney? You would like to add Ms. Fellers and remove Mr. Sweeney. Is yes. that correct? That's, That's your motion? Mm -hmm. Is that or, satisfying? Or, yeah, but see, they won't let me do two ors. I mean, an or. Correct. I would like to see Ms. Crosby back on that committee, to be honest with you. So now you want Ms. Crosby instead I would like of Ms. To Fellers? Have, yeah, sorry about the confusion. But I prefer to have Ms. Crosby back on that. I wish they would have brought this to us prior to bringing it to the floor so that we could have done this in our own caucuses or committees instead of wasting everyone's time tonight trying to figure out who belongs where and who you want to take off and put on. All right, if you could restate your motion yes. clearly. I would like to see Mrs. Ms. Crosby back on finance and we can remove John, and remove John Sweeney to another. Or he's, he's on quite a few committees anyway. So he, you know, this would be more committees than probably anyone else is on. Okay, so Ms. Goral, your, your motion is to insert Ms. Crosby on Finance Committee and yes. remove Mr. Mr. Sweeney. Sweeney. Yes. Is there a second to that? Do we have a second? Go ahead, no, I have a second yet. Ms. Crosby, is that a second? That's a second. Okay. Might as well vote on it. Ms. Crosby seconds that motion. Discussion. Are there any board members opposed to the motion? So let's do a roll call. All right, so clerk, can you please call the roll? Certainly, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We will start with Mr. Booker. No. Mr. Butita. Uh, just for clarification, uh, the no is to- Our amendment. To the amendment. Correct? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. Um, I'll pass. Whoops. I didn't hear the. You said you'll pass. 
Oh, that no. was a pass. Come back. Come back. Okay. okay, Mrs. Crosby. Yes. Might as well. Ms. Fellers. Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Goral. Yes. Mr. Guevara. Pass. Ms. Hansard. Yes. Mr. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Lindmark. No. Mr. McCarthy. No. It's this, this way. Mr. McDonald. No. <laughs> Mr. Neighbors. Yes. Mr. Penny. Yes. Mr. Mm. Salgado. Yes. Mr. Scroll. Yes. Mr. Sweeney. Nah. <laughs> Mr. Tassoni. Yes. Mr. Thompson. No. Mr. Webster. No. Mr. Arena. No. Mr. Butita. Yes. I think it's done. Mr. Gravera. No. Ms. Hansard. Yes. Oh, I have to say what she said. What was that? She lost count. She already had the chairman. Mr. Chairman, that's 11 yes, 9 no. So the motion is approved. Thank you, Ms. Gordon. Okay. Moving forward. I do. <laughs> I lost track. <laughs> now we have the amended. Yeah. The original. Mm -hmm. As amended. Okay. Do you remember who made that motion? Arena and Guevara. Okay. The original motion for the adoption of the structure. Got it. Okay. Uh, Ms. Delma, just for a point of clarification, uh, Ms. Hansard was asked twice, so just make sure that her vote was only counted once. Yeah. I apologize. I think the chairman. Ms. Hansard was a yes. Okay. Okay, so Wait. yes. Mr. Hall. Thank you, Chairman. I, I think we're um, I think this can be taken care of pretty simple. I think we're going through a lot of motions, a lot of stuff when if you give me about five <coughs> minutes, I'll find a female to put on that board. It passed it. Well, it passed. It was just passed. Yeah, it's passed. Yeah. Oh. Point of order. He, well, I might be wrong. Okay. Okay. Yes, are, go are ahead. Are we sure of the count? Because Mr. Sweeney had a different count. No, we should be. Can you recount this before 11. this ever well, on. I just want to make sure we're clear on it. Yes. Would you like me to review the? Well, just to make sure it's accurate, because he's the one at the disadvantage here. Wow. Do you want me to read it? I say just read it. Yeah, read Just read it? Yeah. Yeah. So please clarify if it was thus was not correct. Mr. Arena was a no. Mr. Booker, no. Mr. Butita was a yes. Mrs. Crosby, yes. Ms. Fellers, yes. Mrs. Goral, yes. Mr. Guevara, no. Ms. Hansard, yes. Mr. Hoffman, yes. Mr. Lindmark, no. Mr. McCarthy, no. Mr. McDonald, no. Mr. Neighbors, yes. Mr. Penny, yes. Mr. Salgado, yes. Mr. Scroll, yes. Mr. Sweeney, no. Mr. Tassoni, yes. Mr. Mc, I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, no. Mr. Webster, no. Any clarifications to that roll call? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Same outcome. Same outcome. But could you restate the outcome again, please? Oh. 11, yes, 9, no. Mr. Sweeney? Yeah, I guess if my math is wrong, maybe I shouldn't be on finance anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just want to say for the record that 
uh, I really only asked to be on two committees and that there were requests made to serve on different committees and I agreed to do it, but I just don't want there to be this perception that uh, I tried to finagle my way onto several committees or more than the average. Uh, my intent was two. My commit, you know, I, I told my wife there'd be two and I had to get, you know, negotiate to expand that, but it wasn't a thing of greed or anything like that. I just want that to be known to the board. Thank you. Mr. Arena. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So finance was one of the requests by uh, Mr. Sweeney. So I'm willing to step off of finance so that he can, can, can uh, serve on it. So, um, yeah, I'm positive. So I move to replace myself on finance with Mr. Sweeney. Okay, so there's a motion now on the floor to, on the Finance Committee to remove Mr. Arena and insert Mr. Sweeney. Is there a second? Yes, Mr. Guevara, second. Is there any discussion? I would just like to know what Mr. Sweeney thinks, if that's what he wants to do. Mr. Sweeney? I mean, yes, I, I, I do have a desire to serve on the Finance Committee, yes. You do would like to stay on finance? Okay. I, sure, yes. All right. So the motion is on the Finance Committee. Mr. Arena is off with this motion, and Mr. Sweeney is on. Mr. Guevara. Um, I think Mr. Arena's made a, an admirable step to um, put somebody that he recruited to be on finance back on it. I think that's, I think that's really cool. I'm voting yes on that. All right, thank you. Is there any other discussion on this motion to amend the Finance Committee? Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So I'd like to amend my motion. And I will um, then replace Mr. Sweeney on zoning. So that, right, then you, switch. we switch. We'll, we'll swap committees. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have an amendment to take Mr. Arena off, put Mr. Sweeney on. Now there's a friendly amendment. Okay. I'm sorry, which committee? Finance. Okay, no, we there's already did that one. You voted on that one? No. Zoning, then he said zoning. Yeah, he said zoning now, but. But we we already did that one. Well, that's why I'm trying to recap. Thank you. Okay, so that's completed. Now there's an amendment. But did we do it? Did we, it wasn't voted on. Uh, we didn't do a... We didn't vote on the finance? We didn't vote on no. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. All right. <laughs> Mr. Guevara? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think, um, so Mr. Arena initially made an amendment to, sw uh, to put Mr. Sweeney on finance and to take him off. He then wants to amend that to say that um, he will come off zoning and Correct. Mr. Or, right? or Mr. Sweeney will come off zoning and Mr. Arena will go on. So they're making the swap from zoning to finance like this. Um, I amend my second to what Mr. Arena has said. All right, that's what I was trying to get to. So there's a friendly amendment to yeah. the amendment. Okay, yeah. can you restate it again, Mr. Arena? I move that I step down from the, fin uh, I'd be removed from the Finance Committee and replaced with Mr. Sweeney, and Mr. Sweeney be removed from the Zoning Committee and be replaced with me. Very good. And you second, I concur. Yes, sir. Yes, that's before the board. Any further discussion on that? Yes. Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? It's good to hear everybody. <laughs> all right. Yes, that was yes. finance and zoning. Now we need to vote on the motion as amended. Now we need to what? Don't point at me. Right, that's what's next. Okay, so now we're going to vote on the motion as amended. Is there anybody opposed to the motion as amended? Is that a, a no? Discussion. Yes. Discussion, please. All right. Thank you. Uh, just uh, back to the uh, chairmanship of the Finance Committee, I'd also like to recognize that uh, Mr. Sagato 
uh, did an excellent job in the last four years as uh, the finance chairman. And I also would like to uh, verbally uh, commit, and we'll do this again in committee, uh, that I, I've requested that uh, Mr. Scott be the vice chair of that committee. So we'll uh, formally do that in committee at the next finance. Very good, Mr. Pitacita. Thank you. It was just a recommendation. It was just a confirm confirmation. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, are there any board members opposed to the motion? Hearing none, please cast a yes for all members present. Thank you. Is that for Gene? All right. Yes, no, Moving on. <laughs> any further dis... Anybody want to throw anything out there? <laughs> all right. We'll move on to our regular schedule agenda now. Did we approve all the committees? Yes, I guess we did. Okay, we'll move to number six is the approval of minutes. Can I entertain a motion to approve the minutes of November 10th, 2022 and lay over the November 22nd, 2022 minutes. Motion by Mr. Hoffman, second by Mr. Neighbors. Is there any discussion? Mr. Guevara. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I was not present uh, for um, the meeting of November 10th, um, I request uh, to abstain. Abstain? Yes, sir. Okay, please mark uh, Ms. Guevara's abstention. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Hearing none. Any board members opposed to the motion to approve and lay over? Very good. Please cast a yes for all members present other than Mr. Guevara abstains. Number seven is the consent agenda. Tonight we have the raffle report and the auditor's report. Can I entertain a motion, please? Motion by Mr. McCarthy, second by Ms. Crosby. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all bo is there any board members opposed to that motion? Very good, please cast a yes for all members present. Moving on to number eight, our appointments per county board rules. Board chairman appoints required <clears throat> a 30-day layover unless there is a suspension of the rule. Tonight we have the Zoning Board of Appeals. The annual compensation is none. Placing up Ernie Fuhrer, he's a new appointment to fulfill the remainder of Ed Conklin's term expiring May 2024. Yes. Th I saw your hand up go first, yes. Mr. Webster. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, am I on? You hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yes, while it uh, is true that there's not annual compensation for Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, for the record, there is compensation. Correct. The uh, Board of Appeals members get paid per meeting. They get 100 bucks per meeting, which is really only half of what they deserve. Somewhere down in the future, I'm going to make a motion to give them a raise. But anyways, uh, what they get paid is $100 for the record, $100 per meeting <clears throat> attendance. Okay? So if there's no meeting, they don't get any pay. So that's why it's... Uh, saying that annual compensation run is sort of true, but sort of not true. <laughs> Am I correct? You're you correct. Ms. Vaughn? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Makes sense. Thank you. Yes. I know that it's, it's customary that, and that we require a 30-day layover, but because of the importance of the board and so that it's not holding up any um, zoning issues, I'd like to um, make a motion to suspend the rules and vote on this appointment this evening. <clears throat> Ms. Fellers has moved to suspend the rules for this item this evening, second by Ms. Goral. Are there any board members opposed to that suspension of rule? Very good. Please cast a yes for all members present. The rules are suspended. I'd like to then make a motion that we um, appoint Ernie Fuhr uh, Jr. Ms. Fellers moves to approve Ernie Fuhr. Is there a second? Mr. Guevara seconds that motion. Is there any discussion on the appointment of Ernie Fuhrer to the Zoning Board of Appeals? Hearing none, are there any board members opposed placing Ernie Fuhrer on the Zoning Board of Appeals? Good. Please cast a yes for all members present. Thank you. Move on to reports of standing committees. Finance Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. We have no report tonight. Uh, our next meeting of the Finance Committee will be Thursday, November, or I'm sorry, December 15th. Thank you, Mr. Butita. 
Zoning Committee, Mr. Webster. Uh, no report. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Webster. Economic and Development Committee, Mr. Sweeney. Hi. How's everyone doing? <laughs> okay, we have uh, one resolution tonight, the resolution approving the American Rescue Plan uh, ARP funds for Economic Impact Program for the Chairman's Initiative, Group 5 projects, um, and I so move its adoption. Moved by Mr. Sweeney to adopt, second by Ms. Fellers. Discussion, Mr. Sweeney? None by me. Any board member discussion? Mr. Guevara. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm new to the board. Um, this time around, but uh, I have uh, trust in Chairman Sweeney um, and the committee on, on these items, and I'll be voting yes. Thank you, Mr. Guevara. Any further board member discussion on this resolution? Hearing none, are there any board members opposed to this resolution? Please cast a yes for all members present. Mr. Sweeney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We will have an economic development committee meeting uh, this upcoming Monday at 530, room 303. Very good. Thank you. Operation and Administrative Committee, Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Public Works Committee, Mr. Tassoni. Thank you, Chairman. Now, no report this evening. Our next uh, scheduled meeting will be Tuesday, December 13th, uh, 5 p.m. in room uh, 510 at the Administration Office. Thank you, Mr. Tassoni. Public Safety and Judiciary Committee. Mr. Lindmark. Report. Mr. Lindmark. I got confused in all the discussion about the committees, so I wasn't sure. Um, <laughs> we had no report at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Lindmark. All right, unfinished business. We do have unfinished business this evening. It's the appointments that were read in October 27th, 2022. And it's for the Rockford Hebrew Cemetery Association. There's no compensation for this board. It's placed up is Theodore Leibovich, it's a reappointment, and Mr. Jay Kamen, it's also a reappointment. Can I entertain a motion? Moved by Ms. Goral, second by Mr. McCarthy. Is there any discussion on these appointments? Hearing none, are there any board members opposed to this motion? Very good, please cast a yes for all members present. We've already went through new business. Is there any announcements or communi communications? Clerk Lori Gumau. Thank you, Chairman. The items listed below were received as correspondence. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Board member announcements or communications? Mm -hmm. Mr. Webster. Yeah, just a, a comment, kind of a follow up. Um, I think you all uh, saw the email from uh, the fire chief, Rockton Fire Chief <coughs> Wilson. Um, and by chance, I ran into him last evening. So he asked me if I saw the email he sent out to all of us. I said, yeah. So we had a, a pleasant conversation last evening, and um, he wanted to thank all of us and let you all know that they, the fire departments thank us for uh, giving them the time to speak at our last board meeting. And so that led into a little conversation where he said he still hoped that we could help all the departments in that. And once again now, I uh, reminded him that we're not likely to have a one check to give to them where they can disperse to all their departments the way they see fit. I reminded him that uh, all these requests have to be very specific what they need the money for. And I reminded him that it's not likely that uh, every department would just automatically get some money anyways. And so I reminded him that some of the departments are flush with cash. And so they, at this point, really wouldn't need it. And so then he agreed with me. Uh, like Harlem Roscoe, for example, they have uh, quite a bit in their coffers, and so they wouldn't need things. So he agreed with that as well. He pointed out that the smaller ones like Black Hawk and I think uh, Northwest, those departments probably are the ones that uh, need the money. And so uh, he also followed up telling me there that uh, our fire department in Rockton, uh, they have reserve uh, money now. So he said at this point, they wouldn't need money anyways. 
And then he also uh, told me that my department uh, in my township, Sherlin Township, they're doing okay right now at this point as well too. So, but, but uh, we had a good conversation and he once again thanked us and he's looking forward to working with us in the future if some more federal money is available. I thought I'd just follow up and tell you that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Webster. Mr. Tassoni. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'd just like to take this time to uh, welcome our newly elected uh, board members and, and just let them know that uh, what I'm about to say is I, I'm sure I speak for many, if not all of us here. Um, you know, we were all had our first board uh, meeting at one time, and uh, I can remember my, I didn't know what we were talking about. I think I barely knew the Pledge of Allegiance. So I just want to say welcome. Don't hesitate to ask questions. I may not be on your caucus. I may not be on your committee, but you can ask me anything you want anytime. So welcome. Thank you, Mr. Tassoni. Ms. Crosby. Um, I just want to thank the, uh, those that supported me for finance, incredibly gracious of you. And I want to thank uh, Paul Arena for placing me on public safety and economic development as a business leader in our community, an incoming chair at the chamber, and having served as president of the Illinois Realtors. These are two issues that are critical to our community. And I'm going to roll up my sleeves, and I look forward to serving on them. So thank you, Paul. Thank you, Ms. Crosby, and congratulations on the chamber. Oh, I thought I saw Mr. McCarthy's first in the whole You could go with Mr. Sweeney first. Mr. I'll Sweeney. Follow up later. I just wanted to thank all those that supported me when I was taking off finance and all those that supported me one minute later when I was put right back on finance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Lindmark. Yeah, I just wanted, for the record, to say how disappointed it is to sit here tonight when all this was decided in caucus, plenty of discussion, I don't know why we would come to this board without knowing who was on each committee and do this uh, in front of the public or committees. Uh, I, very disappointing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lindmark. Mr. McCarthy. Yes, on a different note. Um, and welcome to the uh, new members as well. But uh, just yesterday, just in uh, general, was December 7th, and it was the uh, 81st anniversary of the attack of Pearl Harbor in which 2,400 Americans got killed, along with 1,000 civilians, not to mention a loss of the battleships, vessels, and also uh, aircraft that have taken place. And it's because of their sacrifice and the World War II generation in general why we enjoy our freedoms today. So I've been to Pearl Harbor and to uh, uh, many different sites around the area, so it's uh, rather passionate to myself and a number of my uh, Pearl Harbor friends, my survivor friends are no longer here, and uh, those of the World War II generation, and one of them grabbed me, and he hugged me, he goes, Kevin, don't let them ever forget about us. And I go, I will not. So that's why I just want to acknowledge you today, and a number of people came up to me uh, yesterday too, so let's all be thankful for our freedoms, thanks to our World War II generation, and all the others that put their lives on the line for us. Thank you, Mr. McCarthy, we all share your sentiments. Mr. Webster. Yeah, uh, thanks for bringing that up, uh, Kevin. It is important uh, that future generations learn this history as well. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, they don't get more history lessons in school to learn of these things. Um, as Kevin knows, uh, my father was there at Pearl Harbor. He joined the service in 1939, and he was there till the end end of the war, and that's where he was stationed at, was uh, uh, Pearl Harbor, okay? And so there's a number of air bases around Pearl, and that's where he was stationed at one of those. And so they taught him firefighting <laughs> in, uh, when he joined the service, and they made a firefighter out of him. So then when he got out of the service, he wound up coming back to Rockford, Illinois here. He was from Tennessee, but he came to Rockford, Illinois, and he joined the, the uh, fire department here in Rockford. He retired after 25 years as a Rockford firefighter. <coughs> so, thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Webster. Oh. Uh, we got Mr. Thompson head. Yes, just up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The reason why the board is meeting here this evening uh, is that we're still um, mitigating some of the fire damage that was uh, occurred a month ago in the old courthouse. Uh, our goal is to have you back in your boardroom by our next meeting time. Um, I'd like to thank Scott Lewandowski for making arrangements uh, for us to be able to meet here this evening. and. Uh, it's a great place to meet, but uh, next meeting we should be back in our boardroom. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Yes, thank you, and welcome to all the new board members. Mr. Webster. Move to adjourn. Motions to adjourn. Oh, Mr. Arena. We thank didn't you. get a second there yet, Mr. Webster. I'll be brief. I'm going to uh, schedule um, Nancy Sylvester, who's a local parliamentarian, to come in and do training for us again like we did last term. Um, I'm thinking her, her thing takes like two to three hours, so I'm thinking Saturday morning might be easier. Do it in early January after we're done with the holidays. But it could be an evening if the uh, majority of the board prefers that. So if you could you know, email me your preferences if you care one way or another, and if there's any uh, dates in January that would be bad for you, let me know. I'll try to schedule it when the majority of the board can attend. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Webster made a motion to adjourn. Is there a second by Mr. Thompson? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you. Yay!